Welcome to grade 10, lesson 5. This is Into Math. We're doing a little bit of right angle trigonometry today, Pythagorean theorem, learning about special angles, and some common trig identities. The triangle ABC is a right triangle because it contains a right angle and 90 degree angle. The other two angles add up to another 90 degrees so that the sum of the interior angles inside the triangle is equal to 180 degrees in total. You know from previous grades that you can always use the Pythagorean theorem in a right angle triangle when you know two sides and you're trying to find the third side. But what if you are trying to find one of the angles knowing the two side length? Or trying to find one of the sides given one of the angles and one of the side length. In order for us to solve these types of problems, we use trig ratios, trigonometric ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. The relationship of these ratios is determined by the, the ratio of the sides to each other. For sine of the angle, you have to take the opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, remember, is the longest side of the right angle triangle. Cosine of the angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and tangent of the angle is opposite side of the, over the adjacent. Once we get the ratios, we can use the tables of ratios that correspond to certain angles or we can just use the calculator that does it for us. We substitute the value of the ratio into the calculator, click the button of sine, cosine, and tangent, or its inverse if we're solving for an angle, and we get the final answer. Sine, cosine, and tangent depend only on the measure of the angle. Every acute angle has one possible value that represents the ratio of sine, cosine, or tangent based on the given angle. This is why the relationship between the measure of the angle and the value of the corresponding trig ratio is a function. For every input, there is only one possible output. Let's take a look at this example. The side lengths of the triangle are 3, 4, and 5 centimeters. 5 is the hypotenuse, it's the longest slant side. These side lengths are, are these side lengths form an Egyptian triangle, which is a right triangle since 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. If angle B is beta, determine sine beta, cosine beta, and tangent beta we have to use the ratios. So sine of the angle is B over C, opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. So the ratio representing the sine of the angle B or beta is 4 over 5. Cosine beta is 3 over 5 and tangent beta is 4 over 3. So far, we have seen how to determine the ratio, but what do you do with that ratio? You can use the ratio of sine, cosine, and tangent to find the measure of the angle. In the following right triangle, determine the measure of angle B, which is right here. We're given two side length, A, which is adjacent to B, since it's touching it, and side B, which is opposite to angle B. The hypotenuse is not given and it's not involved. Since the hypotenuse is not involved, I know that the ratio is not sine or cosine because both of those ratios have the hypotenuse in, in them. So I'm gonna use tangent. So tangent of angle B is equal to opposite over adjacent. So in this case, tangent B is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 3 over 2. Tangent B is equal to 
3 over 2 or 1.5. And now I need to find the angle. So I'm going to do B with angle B is equal to 10 inverse of 1.5. In your calculator, when you're solving for the angle, you have to press second function button or shift button, depending on your calculator, and then sine cosine or tangent ratio, and then the value of the ratio. So if you do that, you will get the angle of approximately 56 degrees. So angle B is 56 degrees. In trigonometry, we also frequently use identities. In math, an identity is an equality relating one math expression to another math expression, such that the first and the second expression produce the same value for all values of the variables within a certain range of validity. So the following identities are always true for any angle. The square of sine and the square of cosine of the same angle added together are equal to 1. This is called the Pythagorean identity. Tangent of the angle is equal to sine over cosine. 1 plus tangent squared of the angle is equal to 1 over cosine squared of the angle and 1 plus 1 over tangent squared of the angle is equal to 1 over sine squared of the angle. This is helpful when you continue into grade 11 and use it more often um, in trigonometry and when working with trig functions. For example, in a right triangle, you want to determine the value of cosine a and tangent a if sine of the angle is given, you know that the Pythagorean identity states that sine squared a plus cosine squared a is equal to 1. Therefore, you can always replace cos squared a uh, with 1 minus sine squared a or sine squared a with 1 minus cosine squared a. So this is what we do here. And then we substitute the values and we get the ratio for cosine. And then you use the tangent identity, which states that sine of the angle over cosine of the angle is equal to tangent of the angle. Since you're already given the ratios representing sine and cosine, you're just dividing them by each other. So you're dividing fractions. This ratio represents sine of the angle from here. This ratio represents cosine of the angle that we found here. And then once we divide them, we get 12 over 5. Remember, to divide fractions, you need to multiply this, the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second one. Some angles are very common. For example, the angle of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. And it's very useful to memorize their ratios in their exact form, just like you memorized the multiplication tables some time ago. So sine of the angle, cosine of the angle, and tangent of the angle for these special angles. Thanks for learning with Intimath.